Finally, I want to show you something that happens uh, quite often um, on pedostatic checks is unfortunately leaks that are very large. In some cases, leaks can be uh, too large for a pedostatic tester to handle um, just because the pumps are not powerful enough to compensate for the uh, amount of leak that there is. Um, a Model 6300 can cover up a leak depending on volume up to about 15,000 feet per minute. Um, but it will not be able to cover leaks that are higher than that. So um, the last part of this training is to uh, show you uh, what happens when there is a leak that is too large for the tester to handle and uh, what to do in these situations. Um, so as you can see, I've opened the ports here to ambient, uh, both PT and PS. Uh, what we'll do is a simulation of uh, generation going into control and generation um, when uh, both parts are open to ambient and this is actually simulating an actual leak uh, that you may have on your aircraft. So let's imagine that you've run the self-tests, um, that you have uh, connected the hoses on your uh, aircraft and your adapter kit, uh, everything is ready to go um, and you will now go into control. So let's imagine that those hoses are connected and I'm gonna leave them open. This is my uh, actual leak simulation. So somewhere on your uh, air attack circuit right now, you do have a very large leak and you're trying to, um, uh, to generate with that leak happening. So let's, let's do that. So if I go in there and I click on ground and I believe that everything is connected all right, I'm going to click on go. So this would be my next step after I run the self-test and connect it to the aircraft. Going to ground and go. So as you can see already, the equalization takes a little longer than it should. It's because the tester is having a hard time uh, finding what is the right amount of volume. Indeed, it's pretty much infinite for that box right now. And as you can see, the rate here for Pitonite came out of Equalize. It's going to go to 20 knots. It's going to go past 20 knots like you would if, uh, if you had a tight system. But instead of coming back to 20 knots as it should, it will continue running up, running away. Same for the static. You might get a better indication about static, but here at this point, you should also see that on the pitot side, there's something uh, quite fishy happening. And you can see on the static as well, it's not stable at the, at the target values. So if you don't see uh, your actual values being sorted and like equal to your target values right now, that should trigger the idea that, you know, um, there is a very large leak going on in the system and I should stop the test right now. But let's say that you didn't see that and you will continue with your low level leak check. So you will go to 100 knots and you can see that now the airspeed is not going anywhere. So my ports are still open, right? So there's not, nothing is happening, nothing is going to happen. I'm actually still at ground, nothing has happened really. And you can see the rate is not following, it should be 160 knots per minute. And I'm still stuck at 49.67. So it will, it will ramp up a little bit, but it will not get to 100 for sure. So at this point you should have figured out like there is a very large leak and uh, you need to stop your, your test. Um, one thing that you should not uh, do, absolutely not do is try to fix that leak while the box is in control. What you need to do is either turn off the unit, that's solution number one, or, um, and that's the only case in which, in which it's okay to do that, is switch both of the channel back to measure mode and, and work on your leak. So we'll push on the oval here, we'll select measure for pitot, and then we'll do the same thing for static, we'll push on the oval here, select measure, and then click on go. The pump will disconnect. The airspeed is gonna go back down to zero or close to that. And now I can work on my leak. So there's something obvious going on, right? There's a leak that's above 15,000 feet per minute. So there are all of the fittings are not tightened or there is a pitot adapter that's not connected or a static adapter is wrongly uh, connected. There's something easy to check that will, that will be able to be fixed easily. Now I will show you what not to do. Is going to ground here. So we redo the same same simulation. I have my ports open, so I have a very large leak. I'm hooked up to my aircraft with a very large leak. I'm trying to generate some airspeed and altitude. If I go to 100 here, you will see the airspeed ramp up.
but it will not get to 100, so same situation. So what I should do right now is either turn off the unit or go back in measure mode and work on my leak and keep doing that until, until I get uh, stable values at ground and when I ramp up my airspeed and altitude, which is not the case here. So what not to do though is the following. You try to fix your leak as you are still in control. So what I'm going to do is plug those fittings right now, the caps on the fittings. And what will happen is you get a very high rate here and we got lucky here. We only got a surge of 67 knots. But the, the tester has stopped because it said it exceeded the rate limit. So this is very bad for the for the aircraft because the box was trying to generate as much output on the pitot and static uh, pressures and it was sending very high pressures, um, which translates into very higher speed. So um, you may create a very large surge of pressure in your instruments as you do that. And the box will come out of uh, control and go back in measure and give you a near number. So this is really not a situation in which you uh, want to be. Thank you for watching the Model 6300 training video. If you have any more questions, you can contact us at 281-325-8300 or visit us on www.laboristab.com slash aviation and uh, look at all the different uh, uh, testers and options that we offer.